Celebrity Book Club. Who's that knocking at the door? It's all your friends, you filthy whore. Your husband's gone, and we've got books and a bottle of wine to kill. It's Hollywood. It's books. It's gossip. I'm shook. It's memoirs. It's martinis. It's It's Studio 54. It's It's Celebrity Book Club. Come read it while it's hot. Celebrity Book Club. Tell your secrets, we won't talk. Celebrity Book Club. No boys are allowed. Celebrity Book Club. Club. Buzz me in, I brought the Cuervo. Hey, my daddy's girl. Hey, even bigger daddy's girl. <laughs> Just two daddy's girls talking about the ultimate daddy's girl today. Um, I hope you're well. It's been hours since I've seen you and we <laughs> listened to the six-hour audiobook of this week's title. A little about us and our process. You know, sometimes you're like, oh, how, you know, they're reading and they're reading. And usually we do read. But this week was different. We went and purchased a JBL clip at a Walmart in Vermont. Say it with me. The American American store, Walmart. Store, business, community center, health provider, bank in some parts of the country, I think. Gas station. I wish they had gas. Um, And we stopped by a Walmart in Rutland, Vermont. Hell yes. Shout out to all our Vermont listeners to get a awesome jbl really good sound so we can blast it because my car does not have an aux old school (laughs) um on the six hour drive back from new york city after our weekend of back to new york city and it's like this is the first time we've actually listened to the book together yes first time in cbc history it was really difficult not to want to just pause it and say hey gal let's chat about this crazy content and make a little bit more content about it and yet we bit our little tongues we held back oh yeah and by the way when we say daddy's girl who do you think we mean we listened to megan mccain's hot new release bad Bad republican Republican. possibly one of history's Greatest daddy's girl. Literally daddy's girl in the dictionary, and it's a photo. It's the meme of Meghan McCain crying on the casket. (laughs) I'm trying to think if history has any other daddy's girls who've made such an iconic identity career out of being a daddy's girl. I really am. I'm racking the brain. I'm just like. No. Yeah. There's no one else. It's not there. It's not coming to mind. It must be crazy to be her siblings, who she claims she's so close to. Like, what it's like to also be the child of Senator War Hero John McCain. Fallen Senator, may he rest in power. Senator John McCain. And I'm just like, right, because she has, so there's the children from his former marriage. Which I didn't know. Pre-Cindy. The adopted daughter, who they love just as much as any Uh, non-birth daughter. Which she kept on saying as like an addendum to talking about one of her birth topics. She was like, oh, and by the way, like, yes, breastfeeding is important, but it's not so important because my adopted daughter, Bridget, who is a speech therapist student at University of Arizona, is as much of a daughter and sister as I am a daughter. Yeah, it was very like, there's an example of someone who wasn't breastfed that still turned out great and is pursuing her speech pathology degree. Which is still funny that John McCain asked Megan to do the speech if he had a daughter who's a speech pathologist. <laughs> well, and that sort of brings into question, like, what is speech pathology? It's a super lesbian um, I feel like it's just profession. so lesbian and it's very like, you. it's like working with special needs kids, I feel. Special needs kids or veteran. Oh, actually, it is very veteran because it's like about like helping people who have been like shot or like. Right, who have some weird, stroke some to... reason why they can't speak. Well, very Keith McNally, who had like a stroke randomly in his trouble talking now. Maybe we could exactly. set him up with Megan McCain's sister by adoption, who is just as much of a sister as any of her other half siblings. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so it was truly psycho to listen to Megan McCain's voice for six hours, even though, yeah, it brought a smile to my face. It really did. I her voice. Say- and then I wanted to push her out. I wanted to throw the JBL clip out the window. There was a couple times, read. maybe certainly more than a couple times, where it was very circular. And I was just like, babe, you said this. 
you are you've already made this point about how you're a fighter and how and how you're not a so like and there's no crying in baseball and you're the last person who would ever be oversensitive about something but yeah it does hurt when everyone's piling on you and twitter is a war zone and that's why i don't open it when i'm on vacation but at the end of the day i am addicted and it is a problem and i will get on twitter and i will go toe to toe with anyone who comes for me because i'm a boxer and i'm a fighter and that's what my dad taught me is don't step down from a fight but don't pile on a woman who just gave birth and is experiencing postpartum anxiety and i will not back down and you're just like okay again like you've said you're a fighter and then you've also said that like every time someone even says literally anything about you it's like incredibly debilitating yeah the hypocrisy hypocrisy a little bit but again she's like and so what yes i have flaws yes i love lgbt (laughs) rights and communities but hell yes i'm also pro fucking life (laughs) wait here's the thing about her pro life free so i've Actually, I mean, I meant to look this up and then sorry, today was crazy, but totally. I'm, let's just go with my memory because that's pretty factual. <laughs> I remember reading a quote from her like 10 years ago when her dad was first running or no, not first running because he ran in 2000. That's all. Remember the Alamo. He ran in 2000 against Bush <laughs> in the primary lost and then won the Republican nomination in 2008. And then lost in quite a large way in the general, as we all know. Wait, what happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> so I just watched, I'm almost all the way through Game Change. So I'm really oh, on a wow. yeah. huge development since yesterday when you had not seen Game Change. Yeah. And I was like, I got to sit down. The moment I left you, I turned it on. Anyway, go on. Um, And she's got a lot to say about Game Change, as we know. <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole nother episode. Okay. So there was this time when she was, when her dad was running 08, and she had this like website called McCain Blogette. And she was just like inventing blogging as a woman. <laughs> and that's where she really like came alive. I feel like where they were like, everyone was like, who is Megan McCain? And then it was yeah. like, oh, she's a blogette. And she was like, yeah, bitches, Bud Light and gay bars. And I remember that like started her career because then she started writing for the famous fake website, The Daily Beast, where she had just like the most random column that was like, I mean, we'll get into like her sort of intellectualism in a minute. Um, (laughs) To me, she's kind of a Frank Bruni where it's kind of just like she's a policy lightweight. I'll say it. Um, Wow. Yeah. Um, and then like, and then if you said that about her, she'd be like, oh, just because I'm a woman, I'm a policy lightweight and no one expects a woman to have an opinion. And the whole book is her saying no one expects a woman to have an opinion. But then you're just like waiting for her to like actually have a real opinion about and something. And then her, I would say. And she just never really gets there. No spoilers. But her only opinion in this book is that like. America needs to have more paid leave for new moms. That's truly the is, only policy point she comes back to is paid medical leave, which is the most just like centrist position. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's so controversial yet. It hasn't really happened yet. And, she and really let's have like, that conversation. Yeah, let's have that conversation. Oh, you think everyone has that opinion? I mean, she did <laughs> blow the lid when she said that Fox News has better maternity leave plans than abc does yeah lib <laughs> lib, consider yourself lib. blown <laughs> when she was always like i feel like she was always like referring to like the far left but just the far left is joy behar and it's like i don't know if i would call it joy behar the far left yeah i mean no i mean all of her criticism like blue pill libs i'm just like yeah girl we're all i'm, I'm with you <laughs> they're annoying <laughs> as hell Oh, wait, back to her opinion on abortion, which is that I, there's this quote from hers where someone was asking about her and she was just like, um, yeah, I do think it's a choice and I would choose not to get an abortion. And it's kind of just like, so that means you're pro-choice, oh, babe. Like I, that is that's like a sect of like Christian girls who are like a little bit who like do drink matcha. I feel like who are like, it's a choice. And my choice is I would totally give birth. Right. And it's kind of just like, okay, like that, like that literally means you're pro-choice. Like, do you understand what pro-life means? Because it's like, I feel like she's, and here's, okay, here's my take on her that I was thinking about. And now I'm going to say what I've been thinking. (laughs) 
I think she's just trad. And it's just like, it's literally like, you're just trad. You don't have this like incredibly deep nuanced Republican ideology that like the other Republicans like aren't falling in love with. Like you're just like this trad girl and you just like want to have a husband and a baby and that's fine. Like just be trad. Like being trad means just like, no, like I'm going to have the baby, but like, it doesn't mean that you're pro-life. It doesn't like, do you know what pro-life means? I don't think she does. Like, it's like, pro-life means that you don't think anyone should ever be able to even have the chance to get an abortion ever. And then she's like, no, and she keeps on being like, no, it's crazy. Motherhood's like really hard. And like, and she kept on being like, no, and I will recognize my privilege because I. it turns out I actually can take a, a month off work, but some people who are minimum wage, like, can't. And the that's amount like, in this book that she says... And I do want to acknowledge my privilege. She also does do that like bad Republican thing where <laughs> she does think she's like badass and fake poor because like she has a Marines sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> and she's because like, the yeah, guy this... at like Columbia recognizes her for having that sweatshirt. It was like a security guard. It's so girls like, yeah, I'm actually homies with the security guard. Oh my God. She is so <laughs> that girl. Okay, wait. Another, okay. A, she's the girl who's like, I'm homies with the security guard. Just like, <laughs> she's so like, yeah, my deli guy knows my bodega. I'm like, <laughs> because I'm a New Yorker. And then, but then spends half the book saying how she was kicked out of New Yorker because like one Samantha B writer like tweeted something yeah, incredibly we need to innocuous talk about, about that. her. <laughs> Okay, which we, okay, but I also was getting okay. The vibe I was getting from her the whole book though was just like babysitter energy. Like, don't you just feel like she's so keys? Oh my god, she is so keys. Like just holding Big car keys. keys. Like, I mean, she's so big because she's huge Starbucks again because yes. she is like trad pumpkin she's spice, but like trad is a little in Arizona. <laughs> but she is like, uh, yeah, like she's the babysitter that's like, uh, my boyfriend's coming with us today. And yes. you're like, whoa. <laughs> you're like, wow, this babysitter doesn't give a fuck. Her dad must be an iconic Maverick senator because she says what she really thinks. And her boyfriend comes with us to mini golf. <laughs> yeah, and you're going to mini golf and like you do see them like make out and she's in like a huge hoodie and you're like, damn, okay. <laughs> she's kind of so also like hoodie and super skirt i don't think she's i super, <laughs> okay, super I've, okay i've gone too far <laughs> too far she's big anyway this marine story is that she's wearing a marine's hoodie and the security guard <sighs> at her columbia dorm shows off his marine tattoo and she's like yeah everyone at columbia was a total elitist but my dad's like a senator and i have a marine <laughs> sweatshirt so i'm basically like poor <laughs> You no, know, she's constantly saying she's poor, but that'd be like, and I get it. And in many ways, she she lit didn't she literally say in many ways I am the one percent? <laughs> she did. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, in many ways. So there's in this part that I want to talk about that was so weird and confusing, where she's like, she only gives one chapter to her dating life and her like hot, sexy, conservative husband. Ben and she's just like Says that she was totally hungover. She's always watching Bill Maher in this book. She's like, so I'm totally hungover in my West Village apartment, noshing on an everything rainbow bagel, <laughs> watching <laughs> Bill Maher reruns. <laughs> okay. So you watch with her with her best friends. And then there's this totally hot commentator, like at the Bill Maher table. And like her friends just like, um, that guy's hot and he's conservative. You need to follow him on Twitter. And then she's like, so my friend grabs my phone for me follows this guy on Twitter before she can even put the phone back down on my coffee table. So hot. <laughs> we'll talk about her coffee table, but I'm sure it's just like, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it's like, I was trying to think who I would do with that. Like, like you know, Chrome. Her, I know. He's, I mean, obviously we'll get into that segment, but it's like target glam twenties. It's modern. so fucking target <laughs> glam. I can't even, it's just like very Wayfair, but like she's spending a little bit more. So it's like target glam. I was trying to think who I would see I've like seen some on actually TV. Not horrible stuff on Target. I used to have a coffee table from Target. See? I'm not ashamed. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. They make fine. It will do, pig. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The fat phobia yeah. jumping. <laughs> no, I was trying to think. I was like, who is. I have been obviously spiraling about this for the past 24 hours because, <laughs> like, I'm like, wow, like, Megan McCain just like 
as a prominent commentator, like fall in love with another commentator that she saw and they just like DM'd and went for and it. And you're also a prominent commentator. And as a prominent commentator, it's just Wonkette. like, I'm Wonkette. And I just like, <laughs> I am a columnist and like, like a podcast trees. And it's just like, maybe I just need to like shoot my shot and like follow this hot guy I have Twitter. an idea. Okay. I think your version of Megan with like her sexy cigar smoking gun having federalist right. husband, your version is actually dating someone like more. It's not a conservative. It's like someone more like blue pilled and just like it's more of a like a sexy. I guess it, that just means Anderson Cooper, but like as. <laughs> S guy and you're like sure here's the thing like we do differ on ideas but I love nothing more than talking politics and like we can just wake up in our big bed and talk politics and at the end of the day he is my sexy husband and we can talk politics okay so I'm gonna I do like where you're going with this so let me just reverse the curse a little bit here though because so the thing is Ben Dominic her husband who is yeah. of Puerto Rican descent. And grew up evangelical. Yeah. Uh, working class. Extremely conservative. Big family. Lots of siblings. But very religious. Knows how to change a diaper. Um, And is always making her just like the most like normal ass like iceberg lettuce meal. And she's like, uh, yeah, get yourself a man who can cook. So he's more conservative than her. And like, and like, she's like, sometimes she's like, yeah, my friends are like, wow, why are you dating this wing nut? And like, he's like more on the MAGA spectrum, even though he is also like anti MAGA and like was horrified and horrified by the, by the January 6th attacks and all of those people should be in jail for life and it's just like it's this way that people who are like married talk about watching news on tv together being like <laughs> we were on our couch together we were horrified by the capital no, riots so we were and she is a huge stemless tumbler and he has his like crystallized scotch and they're just like mouth jaw. You know, the way that married folk get so much more hyped <laughs> about events on the news <laughs> this is so together no now i'm remembering because i remember me and my other company partner like got in a big argument about whether or not <laughs> the january 6 riots were a big deal and i feel like it was because he had been watching them with his boyfriend oh i thought you you know what what moving on uh, um <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's what i'm saying no go back to what you were saying no and go back to what i was saying about what you were saying which okay, is that about so she ends up like marrying this guy who's more conservative than her, more of a After so many so bad days. Wouldn't like the reverse for me would like be dating someone who is just like such a like woke SJW who has like such a like pink hair and like one green fingernail? I am thinking it's not that. That's sorry, no. Where it's like the reverse that. of that. She's still a little that's still a little too close to you, and I know you don't think you are pink hair at all, but you just said you were going to dye your hair a day ago. The I reverse did for just you, right, Barbara? I was like, "Do you have a dye hair?" <laughs> would just be like a total wonk star who lives in Chelsea and loves Meadow. Ugh. Is what I'm saying. You're wow. like, isn't the opposite of me some total like fairy? I'm not. Like, no, I'm, I'm not saying that's the opposite of me. I'm just saying that's the more extreme. Like where she's like, well, I'm not that extreme. What I'm saying is like that's not so extreme from you. Sorry. Okay. And the more extreme version would be the Chelsea Jim like communications director speech writer question maker for Anderson Cooper. Oh God, barf. <laughs> that's like my former career but yeah maybe you're right okay so it's like oh with that guy like van jones is he gay she talks about him that's cnn gay van jones the way she mentions she has a chapter literally just called like friends which is so random <laughs> um well his spouse is Jana carter okay so he's not gay he kind of has a lisp though <laughs> i'll date some other blue pilled matto producer <laughs> And like we're watching, I love all just this idea. We're watching like not even like we're watching reruns of Mad Out hungover. <laughs> That's like my mom's fantasy day. <laughs> so yeah, then her and she's like, before we the phone even got put down back on this <laughs> glam Target coffee table, <laughs> yeah. like he'd already DM'd me asking me on a date. 
But then what I liked about this is so then they go on this date and she was like mm. on their like third date. She was like, well, you're dating anyone else? He was like, no, you're the only person I want to date. And I was like, that is is actually kind of beautiful. And she was like, he had been married twice before, which I thought was a good thing. And he like knew what he wanted and what he didn't want. And she was like, and I've been on so many bad dates and like had so many bad relationships. And at that point in my life, like I was ready for someone who was just like not going to play games anymore. Okay, so die. Their first date was at the Beatrice Inn. Yeah, I that really killed me because we were we had talked or something. I was like, Wait, let's go back and just hear where that was because she had said like this West Village Italian restaurant. She was like former speakeasy Italian restaurant turned Beatrice Inn. So do you realize before the Beatrice Inn? When it was like before, it was like so Mary Kate, and when it was an Italian restaurant. What? No, this was no, this was after it was so Mary Kate. No, I, I'm saying the bit like you know, I'm saying the storied history of the restaurant. Okay, wait, you know that well, it was. It wasn't a restaurant. Then it became such a like nightclub. Yes. Then it went back and, to being a restaurant. And a friend of the pod, Danny's family owned the Beatrice Inn's like <gasps> Italian restaurant. Really? From like the fifties, yeah, until they sold it to like the Beatrice Inn. Wow. Like when it became Mary Kate style. Wow. Which I famously insane? never got into in my heyday. Which is mortifying. Um sad. I mean, I've never been either. But I was like, I had this weird curse where just like I would like I remember one time going literally with Cole Moore, the model, at like and I like I was just like, oh, there's no way I'm not getting into Beatrice. And like all my friends are always making fun of me for just like not getting into Beatrice in 2008. <laughs> and then like literally showing up just like with a supermodel and everyone just being like, mm, actually, private event. And like they would say they would tell you that lie, which meant like you couldn't get in. And I was just like, cool. Loser. So I actually am the biggest loser in New York City and I'm fully cursed. Wow. Super sad. Very us trying to go into this restaurant in Vermont like night after night. <laughs> Desperately trying to get into Peasant and Waitsfield. But then we finally yeah. did get in because as the very White Lotus gay mater D told us, we were diligent. And he was diligent. Um, and Megan McCain had diligence with her dating <laughs> style. It also, I feel like her rom-com story of getting with this guy is that thing of just so like, when you've almost given up on love. Right. And it's just like. And when you don't even care anymore and you say, sure, I will go to the Beatrice in with this guy. That's when it happens. She also says, I went on so many dates with guys I thought were gay that were straight and gay guys that were actually straight like she has no gaydar even though she's best friends with clay aiken and was basically saying like she was tricked and like went on so many dates had crushes on gay guys which is so her and like confused random bridesmaid it's weird that she is so confused random by doing going on all these dates with gay guys or gay I, mean, I feel like she's maybe just saying that to prove that she's such a like member of the LBGTQIA community in this way, just being like, yeah, I'm always like attracting gay guys. And I think that she was like, because I can also see, I mean, hello, have you looked at men these days? They all look like faggots. So it's like, <laughs> I could maybe see her going on dates with these like random straight guys and her being like, wait, aren't you, aren't you gay? Like you're in a sweater. Right. She thought all these guys were gay and then they were. And straight. to be honest, like, as someone of office experience, like, anytime a man talks to me at an office, I'm just like, well, you have to be gay. Why else would you be talking to me? Because you're speaking. Yeah. If you're straight, like, aren't you just completely silent? Either you're completely silent or you're going to go just like rib the other guys about football and tits or whatever, but you're not going to come up to me and talk to me. Like, that's insane. So, like, you must be gay. So I can yeah. see her in that mindset just being like, well, why is this besweatered guy and his little Todds like coming up to me and like right. wanting to like go to Baba with me in 2009 if he's straight? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Megan, want to go to Babo? <laughs> but it does. I I can see her like after a few of those dates, like in one of her huge hats and like skinny jeans with like huge DSW boots being like talking to this guy and being like, it's so sitcom and will and grace where she's like, I mean, we have great conversation and great chemistry. The big question though, is he gay or straight? <laughs> and her and her girlfriends are like doing a pros and cons list. <laughs> right. And they're just like, okay, close with his mom. That could go either way. <laughs> Celebrity Book Club. 
I also loved in the sort of like umbrella of Megan's honesty <laughs> that I thought was really fucking awesome was when she announced her engagement on The View. And she said, I don't want women to view, to like, I don't yes. want women to think that this is an accomplishment. And I'm not, and please, like to all the single ladies out there, please know that I am not saying that this is an, an achievement. And I was like, hell to the yes. And she explained and she was like, yeah, because it's like, you know, we're taught to view growing up because of rom-coms that it's like, this is the goal, that marriage is the goal. And she was like, this isn't the goal. This is just what's happening in my life right now. And this is just where I am. That's why I'm like, when you said she's trad, I'm like, she's a little more like best friend babysitter trad because like there's also a point where she's like breastfeeding and she like looks to her husband and she's like, "Ah, did you think I had like motherhood this much? Because she is more of a like, she is like the girl boss of an admiral. She's like, yeah, I moved to New York City at age 18. I lived in the West Village, Tribeca. So Columbus Circle. Like, well, it wasn't yeah. my plan to be a mom. I guess, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't think she's trad in such a, like... Like, when I say trad, I mean the way that just, like, a cosmopolitan folk would say trad. Like, not in an actual... Because I'm, like, you know, a full evangelical No, I know she's not, not Call trad. themselves trad. Like, I, I think guess. that she's, like trad in like an urban way where she's just like yeah like i'm fucking into my hot masculine husband sorry yeah no i get that she's not like full mormon evangelical and is like urban outfitters trad but i feel like there's even people who are like more trad in an urban way than her (laughs) yeah and i yeah there there are elements to her where she's really like she's actually more feminist than you know your i mean what is feminism but like you know than your cheryl sandbergs and she does at one point she calls out lean in she's like the privilege of lean in because you have to be like a ceo to even be able to lean in and motherhood is insanely hard and it's been such a journey and i can't imagine how you would do it like if you weren't one of the five co-hosts of The View who did lead The View to its highest ratings in its 20-year run and three Daytime Emmy Awards. I just, like, wish I watched The View more. <laughs> but, like, wasn't home. I, like, I'm just saying sometimes I would, like, be cleaning someone's house and they would have The View on and I would hear, I would overhear Whoopi and Joy and Megan fighting and then I would, like, walk in and watch it. I'm just saying, like, The View is, like, the funniest show on Earth. <laughs> It is really funny. And, you know, she had, I mean, so she talks a lot about how difficult it was to be the only Republican. Republican. And everyone took out their Trump hate on her. And this part was so insane. She's like, yeah, so (laughs) this is what you're all here for is this like view tea and that like whoopi promised her father (laughs) that like she would look after her like the little daddy's girl she is and whoopi like did look after her for two years and then something changed and then something shifted and it was like mostly trump derangement syndrome and it was like joy and whoopi were just like being like kind of mean to her like on air and it's very just like the tea that she spills is really just a non-tea other than the fact that she asked joy to apologize her for like saying that she wasn't happy to see her back when she got back from maternity (laughs) leave. And then Joy's, like, Joy's (sighs) assistant was just like, Megan's not getting that apology. Like, that was the only tea really revealed in this book of the backstage drama, which I feel like was also even known maybe already. I mean, the book is a lot of her quoting memes made about her being like, and you've all seen the meme. The It's like, oh, right, like, you hate it. You've all seen the meme of Whoopi saying, okay, to me, which was mean. She's like, which would get... 300,000 retweets and 78,000 likes. And it's dunking on Megan Day again. And I'm kind of just like, she's constantly saying that like everyone's dunking on her. It sucks. And it's not okay to dunk in the same breath that she's saying that just like, uh, cancel culture is bullshit. And just like, why is everyone just like, can literally can anyone grow a thick skin and like get over yourselves and like take a joke. And it's just like, but you literally like are shivering because like Whoopi isn't your babysitter for the entire time you're on the view. It's like, and this is the kind of like the whole circular logic of just like of all sort of like Trumpism and the kind of like anti cancer culture where it's just like, why is everyone being mean to people who are being mean to people who are being mean? It's just like we're just going in a circle here. 
it was insane when she actually got like beyond boomer and like was I feel like this actually is so joy Behar of her and she was like did you guys know that like really big touring comedians won't even go to colleges anymore like Jerry Seinfeld doesn't want to go to colleges anymore like because of cancel culture it's also like well yeah like colleges students are also 20 and they don't need to see Jerry Seinfeld, who's 65, 65, like, and Chris Rock, who's also 65, and just, like, all these 65-year-old <laughs> comedians. And she's like, can you believe that? Like, they can't handle the truths that, like, Seinfeld and Chris Rock are about to drop. And it's like, well, they're also not going to see grown-ups, too. So, like, is that because of cancel culture? Like- <laughs> <laughs> but the, again, is what I mean, I'm just like, well, babe, like, what is, like, what are the truths? Like, what is the thing that, like, everyone can't handle? It's, like, always just pronouns. And Jerry Seinfeld being, like, so I'm a B now? Is that my gender? <laughs> <laughs> buzz, <movie> buzz. <laughs> I guess that was, like, a B movie reference. Uh, that's why I'm imagining okay. his, like, jokes are that he's playing at, like, Grinnell College. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> I know you're being regionalist. <laughs> Joy Isn't Bay Grinnell Harbor actually here. such a like respected Midwestern <laughs> college? Um, I guess it is. Our friend went there. Our Who? friend's brother went there. Oh, yes. Alex went there. Okay. Um, Who I'm any... closest to. <laughs> <laughs> but then, like, again, like, when then she gets to an actual point, she's just, like, insanely pro-Israel. And that's because she just, like, loves Joe Lieberman, who right. I've she, always hated death. because he's anti-video game. And, like, this comes back to why Meghan McCain is not the future of the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. Because it's, like, she's holding on to this, like, very 90s Joe Lieberman, like, video games are bad, like, bipartisan kind of pearl clutching, where it's just, like, the bipartisan pearl clutching that's, like, upset about the January 6 riots and upset about video games is, like, not the future. It's, like, the future is literally, like incels on twitch and it's just like that's who you're gonna have to reach and it's just like she's being anti-video game but then is still just being like yes once i had a friend who had a gun rack on his car isn't that badass and then she's like my friend from new york was so afraid of guns she couldn't even come to arizona without like shaking in her boots but i knew what a gun was (laughs) badass gun check meanwhile it's like she said, this is my favorite anecdote. She says that once driving with her daddy, she looked out the window and said, Arizona's so boring. And then her dad literally pulled over on the side of the road, like outside of Tucson, and was just like, Megan, why don't you show some respect for the people who built this state? Why don't you show some respect for the gorgeous nature that is all around you? Why don't you show some respect for being born into one of the most beautiful states in the country to a family that loves you and puts food on the table and works hard so that you can enjoy the fruits of their labor? Why don't you show some respect for Arizona founding fathers and mothers why don't you show some respect for the indigenous people of this state and their traditions and it was just like it goes on and on and she was like and that moment was a total turning point in my life huge turning point I mean, every turning point in her life is just, like, a one, like, sometimes she talked to her dad. Her dad. I mean, that is so me when someone's like, oh, I went to Boston. It was so boring. And I'm like, oh, yeah? It was so boring? Did you walk to Charles River? Did you see how gorgeous it was? Did you go to the MFA? Did you try a slice of Sicilian pizza? Did you get a lobster roll? Was this you to yourself as a child? No, I just, this is, like, you know, because everyone's so anti-Boston now. It's, like, a thing that people think is, like, funny to do. Right, right, right. Because, like, it's entered the lexicon that, um... Boston like, is like a provincial town. I think, you know. Well, no, because people are like, it's racist, which like it is. But people love being like, it's also so boring. And like, how dare it be like known as like a. Right. And they're just like, well, why don't you actually show a little bit of respect for the rich for the f- history, food, founding culture, authors. sport, natural beauty. Okay. Another just like in the sort of Megan hypocrisy. Uh, <laughs> Add to the Megan hypocrisy list. Uh, Megan hypocrisy list. She starts the book by saying that Pam Anderson is a Russian plant oh. for just like supporting WikiLeaks. And it's just like at her whole thing, she was like, and I knew that every word coming out of Pam Anderson's mouth on The View was directly from the Kremlin. The Kremlin. I know. And it's just she like, said, okay, the Kremlin. actual psycho matto pilled. And it's just like, you're here saying that just like, oh, like saying you're such a free speech advocate, but then you're just being like, mm, you think so? Ad- fuck Wiki- WikiLeaks. So like, fuck WikiLeaks, like, fuck leaking, just like, fuck documents, just like, 
like Julian Assange is evil and like should be tried and like Pam Anderson is a liar and is working for Putin. I always like kind of like go through periods of forgetting till someone reminds me like Megan. Thank you, Megan, that I'm obsessed that like Pam's cause now is just Assange and she's so horny for Assange and just like we'll post a black and white like photo of Assange's like profile and be like you will be with me soon and it's always like such a crazy poem but this comes back to I guess and this is also Megan being so like I don't do drugs oh yeah she was like drugs never did them and it's like even though she was like a total party girl like she was such a party girl in an ASU way and like maybe was vodka soaked tampon when she was 19 but like I was think she was just like vodka shooters and like not even getting that crazy I mean I do I do think the vodka soaked tampon is also very just like myth like no one was doing them <laughs> like one girl did them <laughs> and it's just like so tall it's such a like, myth about binge drinking and hookup culture yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe that's true. But anyway, I'm just saying because Pam Anderson is so coke, and I feel like she's also just like hating that element. I'm drawing a connection here that's maybe a little tenuous. <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, it's more like Pam is fucking fab and is coke and is Assange and is sex tape. And like, I feel like Meg, oh, you know, here's the thing. I do think Megan does keep her bra on sometimes during sex. Harry Bradshaw style. Yes. Well, I mean, I have, of course, absolute respect for what happened to her body after birth, but I feel like maybe because, like, Megan is so, like, big tittied, maybe she, like, likes the look and it's in this, like, huge burgundy lace bra that she's, like, riding (laughs) Ben in. (laughs) And it's while they're watching CNN and she just takes off her top. And but like, then she's but she's also being so like uh yeah sorry like can I get a, just a little bit respect for being a real mom like yeah not everyone is an insta perfect airbrushed mom with no hair out of place when I gave birth I was in sweatpants for six months I mean she's so COVID jokes and just like mm, Ugh, yeah uh, wake me up when hard pants start okay. I feel like there's a lot we actually need to get. I know. We haven't even gone to the funeral. (laughs) Okay, but but speaking of her being post-pregnancy with the line, have you ever seen an orca in captivity? (laughs) (laughs) And that's when you're like, she is funny. And like, I was like, lol. Like, and I do have to say, and I will admit this to you as like, we were not staring into each other's eyes because your eyes were on the road. Yes. In this way that I do cry at every movie. Um, So she plays, which is insanely iconic. Did you cry during the eulogy? I teared up during a eulogy. So we'll she play plays- the entire 20 minute clip in this podcast as well, but she plays the entire eulogy in the audiobook, start to finish. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's about her dad. Well, okay. I love also the part before where she was just like, um, yeah. And people wondered why they asked me to give the eulogy out of all of his like sons and daughters. <laughs> and I'm the most public figure. <laughs> it's just literally just like yeah sorry i'm the most famous like i have the most followers like yeah i'm doing obviously, obviously i'm doing i'm megan mccain <laughs> I'm literally Meg- so deal with she that. was like and of course i was a mess because it's this whole thing about how like she's like have you ever heard a death rattle <laughs> you don't know it till it happens yeah she really goes into detail about his last days in hospice and yeah i mean it's it's no it's sad it's quite sad anyway and how she's crying the most and then she references the meme that I, or the gif that's always I love to use in reference to whenever I'm tweeting about my dead dad is her, oh, with her standing over, over the, the standing casket. Over the casket. I mean, that's one of the most iconic images ever. Like, this is the thing. It's just like she should be if she was actually like a fun chica, she would just be like, that's hilarious. Like, because that I is, I know. That. And the montage of her saying my father 18,000 times in the view, like, that's also so funny. And she references that in the book being like, and there's an extremely hurtful video of me that like pains me every time I see it. And it's just like, girl, get over yourself. Which again like, goes back to that thing. It's like, you can't handle that meme, but like, you're afraid for America's youth who can't handle Jerry Seinfeld's comedy. Right. But and I'm a huge you- Seinfeld fan. Okay. I'm just throwing that out there. We all know that, though. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> no one said you weren't a Seinfeld fan. <laughs> 
No, and it's just like, and this gets back to the Samantha B episode, where it's like she basically leaves New York because this one Samantha B writer <laughs> quote tweets her. She's she's in Virginia for the pandemic, and like when Black Lives Matter starts, she's like at this house in Virginia, and like because she doesn't know when the view is going to start again, and she's just like pregnant, whatever. She just had the baby, or if it, it's all happening kind of at the same time. Yeah, she just had the baby. And she's just like in recovery. And it was, you know, it was a traumatic birth. Da, 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 da. She had high blood pressure. She couldn't leave the hospital. She talks about it ad nauseum for just like 18,000 pages. It's difficult. And the protests are starting. And she's being, again, such a like blue pilled pearl clutcher. And has just been like, I support peaceful protest. Oh. I do not support the destruction of property. And she's like, freaking out and she's being so just like New York is a cesspool like uh, the degradation of Midtown like I can't go back it's a war zone no, acting like this line that all like moms love to use to be like no 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 of course people protest but I'm talking about family Small owned, businesses, small business, which are politicians' favorite thing to talk about. And she's like, my neighborhood, and it's like, okay. She then she reveals she lives in Columbus Circle. She lives. She lives on fifty seventh. <laughs> she lives even further. She lives between tenth and eleventh. And it's like Mima. neighborhood. That neighborhood is literally like dead. A, it's a car. It's like an Audi dealership. Like uh, what? It's a very warehouse. Like one it's like diner. The, the ABC Studios, like the CBS Studios, like one weird diner. It's just like it's not a neighborhood. So she's like, uh, my neighborhood is in tatters. Like, I feel so sorry for all these small business owners. Like, we live in a war zone. It's Baghdad in 2004. (laughs) And then this Samantha B writer quote tweets it just being like, Megan, I live in your building. Like, it's literally fine. (laughs) And so then she goes in this, like, 10-page tirade being like, and that's why I had to leave New York. Because of the bullying and the piling on and the attacking the daughter of a former presidential candidate. A maverick. And it's like, if you're such a gun-toting badass, like, can't you handle a tweet? But she's like, no, it's dunk on Megan day. And because you hate Trump, I'm your punching bag. And she's like, sorry, I won't be your punching bag. And I do have to leave New York. And it's like, this is isn't even like a rude thing to say it's literally just this other chick being like i live in your building it's fine and she doesn't address the substance of the criticism i'm just like either she's too afraid and she just like eats again small businesses and doesn't even like get the roast that it was just zara that it was just zara and also like the whole roast of that whole time period was that it was like the levi store was like boarding them up and like the levi store was also like was not looted like fine like all the stores were fine and they were all pretending like everyone was so desperate to get their heavily discounted merchandise and it's just like no one cared like no one was trying to get the 50 dollar levi's for free levi's but again that's because she doesn't even know and didn't even because see she that doesn't because know she, was. she was in virginia and I'm she just can't like, even handle that. And it's like she's like, I wish my father always had amazing conversations with people across <laughs> the aisle. And it's like, okay, have that conversation, Megan. I'm ready to see the convo. And it's like, and I get it. You know, maybe Joy Behar is not the best person to have a conversation with because, like, Joy is insane. <laughs> And then all she talks about is about, like, emailing the management company and her hot husband, who has a friend who owns a moving company, and how they, like, she was kicked out of her city. (laughs) And she was being so, like, yes, all landlords. (laughs) She was, like, and the management company was actually really supportive of me breaking the lease early because I was bullied out of New York City by a Samantha B writer. (laughs) (laughs) And I love my management company. (laughs) God. I love my landlord. She's awesome. She's awesome. awesome. <laughs> oh, wait. We are getting that bumper sticker made. <laughs> um, Should we talk about Ivanka? Yes. And Let's Jared talk about crashing. the list. Because now that I watched. Wait, also, you said you had like tea about the funeral? Oh, no. My tea about the wedding. Oh, about her wedding to Ben. Okay. Well, so it, the wedding was officiated by CBS News' John Dickerson. Okay. Who is one of the three hosts of the Slate Political Gab Fest, which is the only podcast that I listen to oh, famously. <laughs> right. It's just this very like sort of blue pilled, like normal beltway um podcast that I've been listening to for 15 years. And like one of the hosts has like been through a divorce. And I'm just very like, these people are my family now. Um, and I'm am very parasocial with them. Um, but John Dickerson, who is of CBS News, um, uh-huh. is very, he's Catholic. And this is why I knew she was Catholic, because he officiated her wedding. And he's very, like, always kind of, he's like, oh, journalist integrity and, like, never really saying what he thinks on the podcast. But he basically is always implying that, like, 
He just misses a time when people got together mm. in a room and put their differences aside and shook hands and had a beer and had a coffee and had a tea and sat down and hammered something out and hammered stayed up out. all night getting the budget done. Because that's what America's about. Three men in a room. Chalking at a Hilton. And he is so... Um, Hilton boots and so he married her at her wedding which she was being like it w- had to be so quick because John McCain was dying and had brain cancer and the husband proposed like at the Mount which Sinai was sweet and I was like yes. that is beautiful and he proposed like in the conference room like at the hospital at like whatever the Mayo Clinic and my father his. will see me get married and they had and I remember their wedding and people being like kind of um, a little bit more like Cheesecake Factory than I thought it would be, I guess. Well, which she kind of explains because she's member. She's like, someone was like, which napkin holder? And I was being like, I don't care. My father's dying. Like they had And this... she didn't like any of the dresses. And she didn't like the dresses. And I remember the cake was being so like, I feel like it was like or, cake made out of like birds and like branches. And it was like a little, it was like, yeah, it mean, really went with the Western theme. Ultimate Etsy to me. Yeah. Like, well, he is so. It was more Etsy than I thought it would be considering that she is so New York target glam. Right. But as you said, she's also trad and he's Southern. So, like, they are just like Pendleton. She's Idlewind. Like, she is Idlewind. Which Pendleton. is Miranda Lambert's. Miranda um, Lambert's very, like, like cheaper target. Pendleton, like, Western. <laughs> like, like, target price range um, clothing. Brand. Yeah. Like, I feel like Pendleton is like made in the USA and Idlewind is like China to the boots. <laughs> yes, absolutely. China, China to, to the, the cowboy boots. boots. <laughs> Another thing I want to say about like having a beer across the aisle. Um, well, one game change I love like it is so many shots of like men in wide ties with one beer having lunch with a white board. As some politics who used to work in politics, that's very accurate. Which I love the ties that are as wide as they can be. <laughs> and so it's insane that Cindy McCain is like the heiress to Anheuser Bush. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and separate just okay i feel like which she does not mention in her when she when she acknowledges her privilege over and over again as a one percenter white woman in america oh and i feel like the only thing that we were saying aloud to each other is she kept on being like and my dad called my agent and congratulated him on like my salary for fox news and it's like tell us the sell she literally did not say what this all was but she also okay this was a weird thing that she revealed when because i feel like she was maybe making like i don't know fuck 75k a year when she was like an entry-level fox contributor for like one appearance a week interesting maybe i I was thinking 125 okay anyway whatever the number was (sighs) she told it to her dad and her dad was shocked and he was like that's a lot of money g wilkers <laughs> and she was like here's the thing about my dad he like doesn't know about money and i was like okay not this tea like is he's literally a senator who's like making decisions about the economy boots and he just like doesn't know how much a car costs and he was, Wait, being so, was like insane. thinking that a volvo costs six thousand dollars or whatever and i'm just like okay so your dad's actually like especially because i mean in Game Change, they do present him as, like, G. Willikers because it's all about, like, the bailout. And it's John McCain being like, well, you need to do the bailout. I'm fucked here. Do I do the bailout or do I not? And it's like, she's like, daddy thought an expensive dinner, but she was trying to make it of, like, he's an American man. An expensive dinner should cost 100 and a notebook should cost a dollar. And pencils <laughs> should cost 50 cents. And, like... <laughs> No, yeah, and she she was like, he would never imagine that, like, a meal at one of Chicago's finest two-star restaurants could cost $375. And, like, he would be so shocked by that, and you're just like, so... Does he, he know kind of, what money is? Does he yeah. know what money is? Especially automotive. I'm like, uh, hello? Should I yeah, hello, like, her, like masculine knowing... things. <laughs> well, also, just, like, the government is so... We're bailing out, like, Ford because we're buying too much Hondas, so... Shouldn't he, like, know what cars cost? Yeah. Literally to the boots. Uh, I do just want to say, if you don't follow Cindy McCain, she's one of my favorite Instagrams. Um, She's very into child trafficking and stopping it. Stay, she's pro <laughs> child trafficking. But, like, every single day she posts a blurry photo of a drink she makes. Yeah, she loves uh, a That's nice fun. She loves a drink. She's and be like, fun. She's a lot of fun. And I didn't for a while think that she was fucking Sleepy Joe. 
But I think she just has a little crush, a schoolgirl crush. Yeah. I The two of them, those bones rattling together, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I see it. I think Joe's a little monitored. I think, like, Joe needs too many people to, like, get him up and moving that he, I don't think he has the wherewithal to have an affair. Yeah. No, I do agree. Oh, wait, we didn't talk about, hold on, back to the McKay, the wedding of who, I mean, the funeral. Oh, who is in, who is out. Okay, so... She didn't, wait, so it's more about who she didn't invite. She was like, yeah, everyone who we invited, the Obamas, the Clintons, yeah, heard of them. <laughs> and then there's the moment where she calls out Trump in the eulogy and like, and I could just see Hillary smiling. And it's like, yeah, of course, Hillary's smiling. Um, she takes every opportunity to be like, well, <laughs> we wouldn't be in this position if I'd want <laughs> butter emails. <laughs> My segment, segment father. father. <laughs> and I got, I don't know what you're I doing. I got like you're nervous. Sorry, I'm actually going through a really tough time right now. No, I know. And I should have taken high. more time off. You should have taken more time. And the fact that we expect women to come back from a bathroom the break and just go right into segments is insane. And it's not fair. And it's not okay. Okay. What does she wear? What does she wear? What does she eat? What does she how, eat? How does she how live? How does she live? All right. What does she wear? Obviously, she's so, so Coles and huge, huge poncho, big wide DSW boots. I mean, you boots. said it DSW, DSW, SW. the deals, boots, Done. hats. <laughs> she is an accessorista. And things sometimes then get rhinestone. She's been kind of hats for a while. Like, I feel like in Tila Tequila times, she was fedora, and now the hat has gotten bigger. And then, of course, like, her hair got completely insane towards the end of The View. I mean, her hairstylist over the past year in The View should absolutely win an Emmy. Like, she just yeah. coming in, like, in drag the course of race, one week, like, she would, it's so drag race, where she's just being, like, high Ariana Pony, <laughs> then, like, triple braids, then Princess Leia buns, like, then Chun-Li buns, then, like, doing bangs. There was that insane one that was just, like, this kind of donut pile of buns, and then, like, a line, almost? Well, I think that's the Chun-Li that I'm talking oh, about. Oh, okay. No, she looks, she's been going insane. I mean, she is, she's just, like, you know... A cheesy Arizona mall girl who has made money and like has a ton of gay friends like telling her that she looks good in this and looks good in that. And they're like, yeah, she's also very like leather, faux leather leggings. Je- yeah, leather jeggings. Leather jeggings. And they're like, yeah, leggings. Clay is like, serve girl. She's booty. She's poncho. the Jessica Simpson line. But the thing is, I don't necessarily think she's buying the Jessica Simpson for Coles. Like, I think she no. is. I guess the question is, where is she actually shopping? I mean, now I know, I feel like now she's just so online shopping. And I just sent yeah. you that, like, exchange she was having with Barry Weiss, where they were just being, like, talking about their supply chain hacks. <laughs> that was completely insane. So Barry Weiss is like, oh, the, like, One of her Billy... good friends, Barry Weiss, who <laughs> bullied out of <laughs> the was also Times. canceled and bullied. Um, is like, oh, supply chain and Megan McKinnon. Barry Weiss, who, lesbian trivia, used to date Kate McKinnon. Right. Completely insane. But back to her supply chain, did she reference, say, like, she was like, oh, try this amazing website, Amazon, if you're looking for furniture? Not even, she says Target, like it was a secret. (laughs) Like, she's like, Amazon is obvious. She's like, well, no, she did suggest the site Cherish that I actually have, like, looked at. Oh, Cherish, yeah. It's weird, this thing where it's auctioned, but it's not. And she's like, our whole apartment is outfitted in Cherish. And I was like, okay, go off. I'm a little surprised by her... When I was chair panicking, I I spent a lot of time on Cherish, but I ultimately uh, did purchase locally. Awesome. At a local vintagery. At a local vintage store in Greenpoint. And I don't know. I kind of think she is in IRL times in Virginia. She is just getting close to Target. She's ordering from Target.com and she's getting like whatever, like $45 sweatpants. But as she says in the book, she hired someone to come over and, like, pick up all her clothes, all her, like, view dresses to donate and all her, like, red carpet dresses to donate. Because she was like, now I'm a Virginia mom and I'm, like, post-view. And so I don't need all this glam anymore. All this red carpet stuff. I just feel like her glam is very that stuff where it's, like, you know in Us Weekly where they're, like, get it for less. And it's, like, here's, like, Amy Adams's like, 
$6,500 Ellie Saab gown, but you can get this version at like ADO.com for $245. Yes, and she exactly. is getting that weird like ADO. And I think it's a mix barn. of her like purposefully a gay being like you should get this at ADO.com and then her just casually as she's picking up like Diet Cokes and stuff at Target grabbing a poncho. Yes. I mean, she is like, you know, prototypical Arizona brunch hat girl, like yes, big white hat girl. and booties. Um, and I think that's like still what she'll go back to once she like gets out and about and is back in the beltway, beltway brunching with all of my best chicas. And is going back to like Momofuku with her big brunch hat. Well, but now that she's DC based and she's been bullied out of New York. Yes. She's getting like matcha green tea waffles with like almond flour fried chicken on top of it with like yeah just Mary. like at, at like the grangely just like <laughs> okay <so> guys <laughs> i got us a table at the grangely it's in north adams it's impossible to get a table there but i pulled some strings because people respect my father in this town she also was very like i which is <laughs> so like pandemic girl being like I choose to have dinner with the people I want to choose to have dinner with. I don't spend time socializing with my non-friends. Yeah, she got really, like, anti-social. Well, she, I mean, I guess it's more just, like, memes about self-care, where it's just, like, don't be afraid to to not. Feel free to cancel. Feel free to say no. And now she's so, like, and my husband actually told me that I've changed since we first met when I was so social, and I was getting drunk with Tila Tequila when I was 24 and causing a mess, and then my daddy took me aside and, like, got me on the Straight Talk Express. Okay, what does she eat? I mean, we know that she... I mean, she defines that salad that we saw that we didn't get this weekend. Oh, yeah. That we went to this restaurant that we ultimately, psychotically, in a gay panic, left to go eat at a fancier restaurant because we got a call from the maitre d' that they actually could fit us in. And we'd just been sat down at, like, a less nice restaurant that was so $16 grilled chicken salad. Honestly, if that restaurant was even being more of a tavern and had maybe, like a few more things in the menu. I'd been like, you know what, we're here, but it really was like just huge kind of boxed green farm girl mescaline salad with just one not even cut up chicken breast on top of it. And I was like, this is like weird girl dorm food. Like, yeah. I'm, yeah. I You're like, yes, this is a good amount of food, but like there hasn't been a ton of thought put into this. And then we left, and then we realized that we actually did have a good 25 minutes before the table would be ready at the next restaurant. So, so then we, we went, went back, back into yeah. the restaurant and asked if we could have drinks after and lying there- and saying that something had come up. <laughs> and then shockingly, it turned out that their cocktail program was unbelievable. And that's a lesson that Megan and Senator John McCain would stand by, which is don't judge a book by its cover and do give the restaurant a benefit of doubt because there are hidden mixologists. She seems to me, Megan is like when she's like definitely like goes ham when she goes out to dinner and like I feel like her and Ben are sharing like three pastas at Babo. You think they're sharing? I feel like he's so like huge steak, like step away. Yeah, I think that he is um kind of male in this way where mm. he gets his his portion, his plate. And mm. he orders, I mean, I think they're both ordering appetizers and they're both ordering entrees. So it's more and your parents. They're it's like, not sharing. She's like, I will have the um, smoked Brussels sprout um, pate. <laughs> and <laughs> no, I guess I just managed, like, she is, you know, whatever. She's like having fab pasta, but I think she's definitely getting like such a slutty like butternut squash parmesan bacon pasta and like yeah. and for starters she's having like I will have the clam tortilla. Absolutely. And I think at home he is like randomly a little bit more of the cook in cuz she is always posting about how he made her like a gross penne and I think she's a little more like heating up a Trader Joe's cuz like mom life it is hard. I don't think she's heating up a Trader Joe's. You don't think she pops in an Indian Trader Joe's I think Joe's she probably at thinks of Trader Joe's as just, like, un-American. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but, like, that area 59th. she thinks 59th, it's just so hippie. 
there is just something about her that is like this type of girl who like also is like, oh, have you tried the Trader Joe's chocolate covered like almond yogurts? I guess that gets back to the whole babysitter thing, which like and it yeah. is so jangling keys for her to be like, <laughs> I'm obsessed with their cashew pasta or like what or just yeah. like the most normal like they're like I feel like, like the gnocchi cauliflower that Trader Joe's makes. She like has a ton of those. Uh, okay, her no, freezer. she is so babysitter because she is so dorm and like she's living in Midtown Manhattan and she's just like getting like her husband's making her rice and she's just being like, yeah, this is fucking bomb. I'm hungover. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, maybe she is like the. Trader I don't think Joe's she would step sag, inside like, a Trader Joe's because the photography, the pops. Oh my god, it'd be awful as the son of Maverick? a former presidential nominee. She's also part just like sidebar, even though this is, we've been talking about this entire episode. She's so part of like daughter of a politician culture, which is like one of the most psychotic cultures in our <laughs> country. And it's like, it's such a weird specific thing where it's like they all act like they are the only daughter to have ever daughtered. <laughs> and like Chelsea Clinton is constantly just being like, let me just chime in here and say that Sasha and Malia are off limits. Just like anytime there's any story about Sasha, like Chelsea has to roll through and just be like, as a former MSNBC contributor, let me just say that daughters of presidents are off limits. And then I it's do just feel like, like you, but you're so right. Except like the last phrase of her book was like, Sasha can be on TikTok. No, I know. And they're just like, we have a sisterhood of daughters of men who are great senators. And like, she was always saying that Abby Huntsman, which is like her best friend on The View, Abby Huntsman, the daughter of John Huntsman, like who got like eighth place in like the 2012 Republican nomination race. And just being like, no, and like, I love the Huntsman daughters. And I love the Bush the twins. daughters. <laughs> she did actually did not mention the Bush twins at all in her book. Oops. At one point, she like, says, like, she was like, yeah, and I was anti-Bush. Yeah, she says she was like, I was anti-Bush and Karl Rove, because they like threw my dad on the bus and just like... She but the thing is, is, she also, like, every time she hates someone, it's because they were mean to her Through dad. Through their dad, <laughs> it's not because of, like, their policies. She's like, and how dare you throw my dad under the bus? Well, in the most general way, she's like, and they led to Trump, because it's just like she read a Newsweek article once. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing about her eating style, I feel like probably in the first few dates of with her husband, Ben, I bet he was like... <laughs> I like a girl who can eat. Like, I'm oh, so yeah. glad you're not afraid of eating. Yeah, no. And he's like high-fiving his boys being like, dude, she can put it away. Yeah, she's not like ordering a salad when we go to like Scarpetta. Like, No, it's very, Um, I feel like that straight couple we met on the hiking trail and the <laughs> Hoax. <laughs> Hoax. <laughs> <laughs> and this like straight guy who was calling his girlfriend Hoax, um, assuming because her last name is like Hoagley or something. She, I feel right. like he's probably like, dude, Hoax can put it away. Yeah, and like she downs a sub, but like doesn't look like it. The more we talk about this, the hungrier you're getting. The hungrier you're getting. <laughs> and I want to be a girl who eats on a date with a big federalist. <laughs> wow. Okay, and how does she live? Uh, again, we're going back to Target. It's Target yeah. glam. And it's, oh, it's also West Elm in that sense of like, you know, the glam trend of like a pink suede ottoman and then a brass coaster and then like this this sort of silver chrome um, and glass coffee table. Yeah. And the, the lamp that I'm thinking of is this clear lamp with mm-hmm. like jingle jangles. Oh, and oh, with the like some... the like the sort of like 20s like fabric falling yes. around it. Yeah. I and mean, she's that... like, I got this amazing lamp. Yeah. It's on 20s. Target. But there must be accents i'm sure because she's like thinks her husband is so hot i'm sure there's antlers around i think there's antlers around in their virginia condo or whatever and it's it's probably like very carpeted like i feel like the living room to kitchen has like the carpet then stops at tile do you know what i mean right i also bet yeah the, or the do you mid- think it's just so property brothers and like gray hardwood it's pretty i think it's actually a little more um not gray hardwood i think it's a little more real hardwood I think her Mima, her 57th, is much more of this like glam faux Target 20s. And then the Virginia home is more antlers, more big leather chair. I do think it is maybe a big brown leather Huge couch. But I don't think it's like couch. recliners and cup holders. Like they're not being No, they're MAGA, not like. Because she's so anti-MAGA. Yeah. Like, she's like such they're a like, Trumper. 
a gorgeous leathery, I think, because it's like shop local America. Do you think they're so like game room bar darts? I bet they have a rumpus. Maybe but with darts. I, I don't know. I don't think they have darts. And closed. Yeah. Post pregnancy, yeah, but I like, think that they actually don't have a rumpus room. This is what they don't have a rumpus room, but they do have cornhole in their yard. Yeah, and they can get over. cornhole out of the shed. Yeah, and they put when it out. When friends she's come like, over, Ben grabs when her cornhole. mentor from Fox News <laughs> uh, comes over, and who knows what it's like. And it's also just like a ton of like diaper disposals everywhere and high bed, of course. That bed is in the sky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they Maybe each have it like. Maybe has like faux weathered. Um, you know when the headboard almost looks like shutters? Wow. No, I've never seen that before. You have. No, because weirdly the bed in my in my parents' house and my bed at my parents' house almost looks like that. It's oh, like, I know, know what you're talking about. Yes, yeah. it's like ridged. It's Yes, it's ridged. I feel like it's almost like a faux weathered gray ridged shuttered headboard. Well, I ask you this. Do you think, speaking of shutters, do you yeah, think- Yeah, riddle me this, bitch. Their house is like friend of the pod, Daniel's parents' cabin with so many shutters as decorations shutters oh and it's such a bennigan's and there's like a wagon wheel on the ceiling (laughs) tons of vintage shutters (laughs) everywhere no i don't think so i think they have that big like airbnb clock that you see with like the roman numerals maybe (laughs) yes (laughs) it's roman numerals antlers family huge frame thing with yeah and there's a there's like a picture of her dad nude like in every room of the house I, and do you think they have like the third? The I feel like they have the circle, of the thirteen stars flag. Oh, the Betsy Ross. Yeah, because we celebrate history. Oh, I'm sorry that we're getting canceled for saying the word history now. Oh, I'm sorry. I just have the American flag. Is that a problem? <laughs> I think there's a grandfather <laughs> clock somewhere. Okay, you've gone too far again. <laughs> She's a modern millennial. She doesn't have this right, big she grandfather this. clock. <laughs> Pipe down. (laughs) Show some respect for the fallen. (laughs) Okay, who are you in the book? All right, I think we're all, we've all been thinking about it. I'm John McCain. (laughs) You're John McCain, specifically for the parts where she talks about how post his um, stay at the Hanoi Hilton, he had trouble reaching for things. (laughs) And now in your post-top surgery recovery, you're also having trouble reaching. Yes. And he has scars on his chest. Right. So he has scars, but like he does love a dirty joke and he's like pulling on his daughter's tie dye t shirt and like he gets back on the horse. Yeah. He's he's putting on the oh that when when um she makes a tie dye t shirt in school and, <laughs> and then John McCain on. puts on the tie dye t shirt and then like that gets his daughter makes in front of all another hip sorry, hypocrisy. He gets shirtless in front of all the other dads. And no, she I know says, she's like he never gets shirtless. It's like well he literally <laughs> did it in front of all the other dads at like this at the PTA like tie dye meeting. And then all the other dads then they put on their daughter's tie dye t shirts and she was like and that that's when I notice when my dad does something, other people do it too. Because he's a fucking leader. Um, and I think that I am, I want to say Megan McCain. Yeah, I think you're Megan McCain because you're always like, I was gonna, I mean, I thought this earlier, but yeah, you're always like jumping in your daddy's lap. And just I like, literally my daddy, will jump in my daddy's and lap. And like, you're always calling your dad for such like fatherly advice. And he is giving such McCain advice where he's like, step up and like grab life by the reins. And you're like, okay, dad, no. I felt so good after trying to my daddy. I do know. And it's like, what was it? My he, like, daddy prescribed me daddy pills. <laughs> daddy, I'm actually, I'm so daddy pilled. I'm always complaining about getting canceled and bullied. <laughs> like, I'm, Right. And you're, but then you're yelling at that no one's thick skinned. And then you're like, can you believe this happened? I can't believe this happened. Just like, somebody called me out on Twitter. I was like, it's so fucked up. And just like, actually, like people need, I to, need to come get out. together. I mean, you're always, you were being so I need to get out of this city and you're kicked out of New York City. No, I'm always getting kicked out of new york you're like i lived in the east village ridgewood bushwick and i've had like a lot of like i have dated like so many guys and i've just like been through so some much of them are gay and some of them, are some of them aren't and i've had like so much relationship trauma and i'm looking for someone who can just literally cook me a meal and is more conservative than me and does run a <laughs> website <laughs> 
And you, okay, you are also so like a um, Momofuku noodle bar is like so not fancy cheap enough. and not fancy enough. <laughs> like literally at a mall. No, I need, actually, if I knew this was going to be, and this is, okay, but this is why I'm not Megan, because I feel like my last meal before the pandemic was the modern. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one way you're not Megan McCain. Okay. okay. I on okay. I feel like I give the audio book of this like three point five caskets, um, <laughs> beflagged caskets out of five. Because like I really do enjoy listening to her talk. Same. I almost give it the audio. I think the audio, the audio four, production even. like four. And then right, and then you get like the whole eulogy. Four brunch hats. Four brunch DC made American made DC brunch hats out of five. Because I'm like, you get the eulogy. She's doing clips of her dad saying, we don't have time for this. Like on the house floor. And she like gives you what she want, which is just her saying she loves guns and gay guys and talking about Whoopi and just saying my father a million times. And it's like. I mean, she literally says my father every other sentence. And it is that (laughs) montage of her that she found to be so tasteless. It's like fully a meme. I think if you read the book, it would just be a little bit like going in circles. And I would just be like, okay, you're saying the same thing. You're not really saying anything. Like, yes, her, her attitude, her like daddy's girl attitude, like is why she is the force of nature that she is. And the attitude, it's a full package, but she's never been like a scintillating writer like from the McCain blogette days to today, like no, I would have seen myself absolutely like okay, and we're skimming this part. You're not. It's like she's a personality, and that's why she was so good in the View. She is yes. a speaker. She's a speaker. She's a television personality. personality. She's a talker. So yeah, audio it. Audio bad Republican. Hell if you yes. want to, if you want a day where you dunk on Meghan McCain, yeah. If you want to become part of the online mob. <laughs> <laughs> listen to bad republican on audiobook cool okay our next book next week's gonna be totally lighter so grab a light leather bomber because we're gonna read lauren conrad's book style it's all about fashion it's all about jeans makeup hair where to wear jeans where to buy jeans where to buy cropped sequined bolero jackets if you're feeling really crazy and you have an awesome event to go to on a thursday with three of your work friends Flat verse wedges. Um, and why every girl needs both. So read along if you choose. And for all you regular listeners, we will see you next week. Um, of course, if you're a I don't Patreon know, cool. subscriber, we'll see you right now for our secret segment. And yeah, if you want to sign up for that right now, go to patreon.com slash cbc the pod that's right if you haven't signed up you can literally go to patreon.com slash cbc the pod right now and you'll immediately be granted access to our secret segment which truly kicks off right now and again if you choose not to do that we'll see you next week and you can um, <laughs> no and it's we're still we're still totally cool we're, t- and- we're totally friends and it's going to be totally fun but yeah if you want to come to like this cool event that my friends and i are having that's like literally inside this vip room right here um just sign up for the Patreon right now. But again, if you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. No, it's kind of like going from like friends you have in class that you're like, oh my God, no, like we are talking about Gossip Girl to like friends you actually party in a dorm with. No, yeah, it's like right after, it's like rehearsal just ended and then like three of the cool kids in the musical are like, oh, do you guys want to go to Chili's? And then you're like, oh no, I, I told my mom that I would go home and like feed the fish. So if you want to go home us. and feed your mom's fish, that's cool. But if you want to come to Chili's, then you I can I eat go- Southwestern egg rolls. Yeah. And limited margs. <laughs> unlimited diet cokes awesome blossoms <laughs> yeah if you want to do the whole awesome blossom thing then uh yeah just go over to the patreon.com slash cbc the pod but again if you don't want to share an awesome blossom that is totally fine that is up to you we accept all types of people anyway that's patreon.com slash cbc the pod get your discover cards out uh yeah we're all gonna hop in a convertible right now and drive to chili's and blast hoku Best. <laughs> Best. <laughs> Celebrity Book Club. Celebrity Book Club is a badass maverick podcast that tells it like it is. Presented by my father, Prologue Project. The show is produced by my daddy, Meg Burning, with editorial support from my daddy, Leon Nafok. 
my father, Andrew Parsons, and my dad, Madeline Kaplan. <laughs> Rest in peace. Our production manager is my father, Perceiverly. Original theme song by my dad, Stephen Phillips Horse. Artwork by my father at Chips and Y. His name is Teddy Blanks. Teddy Blanks. He stood for something. May he rest in power. Follow us on Twitter at my father. Subscribe on your favorite father today. Because that's what my father would have done. Leave us a review. Leave us a five-star general review in honor of my father, who always took time out of his day to leave reviews for his daughter's podcast. And don't forget to tell your daughter's father about us.